someone's just looking to build their self-esteem and their confidence. Mm -hmm. What does the brain tell us about the process of doing that? Is it, is it, does it go back again to what we said about awareness, about understanding the feelings and the consequences and about setting goals and repetition and accountability? It will get to that, but there's actually a little bit of a jump start to that, which is really helpful, particularly in terms of confidence and self-esteem, which is that usually there's a particular recurring negative thought that's associated with feelings of lack of confidence. Um, so if you can identify what that is and create a positive affirmation that's like the opposite of it or something that counteracts it, then that can be a great way to get started. My phrase would have been, it has to be perfect and it's not gonna be perfect. I wouldn't have been able to say this last year, but now I would, I would probably be able to say, it is gonna be better than perfect. It is gonna be amazing, like I know it. Um, but to get myself there, I could have said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's gonna be great. Or I could have said, maybe it will be perfect. Sometimes a question I ask myself is, what's the best possible outcome that could happen here? So it's changing your language in your mind about the things that you think. So that's basically metacognition, which is that you can, you, you can understand your own thinking and then reversing that narrative quite strongly, even if it doesn't feel like it's totally true and just repeating that so much that you start to wear down that other pathway. Does language really matter? The language we say to ourselves and oh, say yeah. to others? Yeah, yeah, it really matters. Yeah, how we speak about ourselves. How do we know that matters? I mean, it's, it's neuroplasticity. If you're repeating something in your mind or out loud, then if that's being repeated more than a another statement, it's the one that your brain's gonna believe. So we can trick our brains effectively by saying something else to ourselves mm -hmm. repeatedly. Because there's this whole movement in you know the personal development community which says you just kind of look in the mirror and you say to yourself like, I'm beautiful, I'm attractive, everyone's gonna love me, I'm gonna be rich. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've found it hard to get on board with that train. Yeah. That one- Because I know I'm bullshitting myself. <laughs> You know, in my like subconscious or whatever, I just know if I said those things, I'm not saying about myself, but yeah, yeah. saying those very, very far away things, I just think my brain is smart enough to know that I'm bullshitting myself. Yeah, I think there's an element of reality to it. So, so there's a few things there, which is those particular things that you said are very shallow. They are not really the things that people should need, you know, need to be saying to themselves. Um, what I find, and I picked this up from the podcast with Lewis, is he said that sometimes he would just say to himself, I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm okay. And actually just sometimes saying to myself, I'm safe is that's what I need to hear. Not I'm beautiful and I'm amazing. That that does feel like A, it's the kind of thing that everybody probably wants to say. B. It's not addressing the underlying issue, yeah, is it? It's not addressing and and I'm gonna be rich. I mean, <laughs> that's the worst one because you actually have to do stuff to make that happen. You know, you can't just say say that. So I think Finding the stuff that you need to say to yourself that is not to do with social expectation or parental expectation or, you know, social group, um, what everybody else is doing, like what you really want to know for yourself, that's going to set you up to be able to go out into the real world and do the stuff that you need to do to get the other things that you want. There you said, you can't just say it, you have to go out and do it. Mm. Now, when people hear this term manifestation, mm. It's highly associated with just kind of saying stuff or thinking stuff. And it's less associated with actually going out and doing it. So yeah. a lot of people just turn off when someone talks about manifestation mm. because it sounds kind of woo woo, put it on the vision board and it will happen. Mm. And in fact, I think I've said this a few times, but I had, um, I wouldn't say it was an argument, but a disagreement which resulted in the person I was speaking to literally getting out of a taxi in the middle of New York City and walking off. I was on a date many years ago and the girl was saying to me that she goes, you can just manifest anything into your life. So you can just think about it and then it will happen. So I said to her, I was like, you think you could just like think about becoming a millionaire and then it will happen. And she goes, yeah. And I go, and you wouldn't even have to like do all the stuff. And she was like, no, you could just like think about it and the universe will attract it into your life. Do you believe in manifestation? And if so, what form of manifestation and how is that supported with neuroscience? Mm -hmm. So I believe in manifestation based on your brain. So your thoughts, your beliefs, your actions. So where I've called my book, The Source, I have said your brain is the source of you being able to attract everything that you want into your life. So I sat down one summer and I like 
researched the laws of attraction and and just looked at whether I could explain them through cognitive science, which is psychology and neuroscience, and I could. So so I was kind of like, oh, I'm onto something here. And the first stage for me was understanding that it is absolutely to do with the way that you think, but then it's not magically like attracting something in the atmosphere. It's to do with the changes that you make based on your thought process. I do, be- I do believe in vision boards, but I call them action boards because I see them as a representation of what I want, but I still have to go out there and make those things happen. Mm-hmm. I think it's also much more empowering to believe that it's your brain that's making that stuff happen and not some external force that you're not really sure what it is. So just saying words can change our behavior so quickly. That's what the experiment showed. I've been thinking a lot, you know, I said, I've got this vlog on YouTube called Behind the Diary. And in two of the episodes, um, I've caught myself out while I'm filming because I said words that I thought would would be unhelpful. And Mm -hmm. I think people, someone in the comments actually challenged me because there's one day when I'm filming Dragon's Den and I'm filming myself, I'm just talking about what's going on. And I go, oh, I really need a coffee this morning. And I stop myself and say, "Mm, I shouldn't say need. Mm-hmm. And then I go, there's something about this casual use of the word need mm-hmm. throughout our lives that is disempowering me. It's making me a slave to the coffee. So I make this point, which I'm sure people think I'm a little bit bit weird for making that I should, I really need to not say the word need associated mm-hmm. to the things because I will then probably develop a psychological um, and maybe a physical, like a somewhat of a physical need for that, for that thing. And it just, it's, it's also just bringing that word need, need into your life. Like you don't have enough, like that you need something. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm constantly changing my words, like little, you know, tweaking them like that. So I would say, oh, I'm going to treat myself to a coffee. And that was your decision. You were powerful there. Yeah. As a choice you made. Yeah. There's an overarching point here about personal responsibility as well. Mm -hmm. When people talk about, um, I can't exercise. Um, I don't have any time. Mm -hmm. It feels like a really disempowering frame versus Mm -hmm. I've got other priorities. Mm. which feels empowering. And I, I think about this all the time, because if you ask someone why they don't exercise, they'll typically blame it on some force. The frame makes it seem like there's a force that's controlling their life for them mm-hmm. that has not given them the time mm. or that they could not. Whereas really it's just a typically a case of priorities. And your your child or your, your job that pays your mortgage can be your priority. Mm. But I think it's important. I've always felt it's important to acknowledge the fact that you made the choice. Mm-hmm. to take care of your child or to go to your mortgage paying job mm. versus I didn't, you know, I didn't have any time. Yeah. This is why yeah. I think about language so much and the language that I use and how that's dominating my life, even constantly telling myself that I'm unorganized, mm. and like messy. Mm. So how that's probably making me a messy person. What have we talked about that, that we probably should have talked about? Is there anything at all, any studies or any insights into the brain and how we change habits that are stubborn um, or anything else at all that you've learned from the ancient wisdom? Hmm. The re- you know, I know that we've talked like very broadly on lots of different things, but I hope that with for me, my intention with every sentence that I've said to you is that people should realize how much potential they have in their brains, like how capable they are of having an even more amazing life than they have already. I think I accept that now more than I ever have before because I've had this conversation with you. Mm. I think I accept that there's so much untapped potential Mm -hmm. in me and that I'm not this kind of fully formed, um, rigid lump of cells. I can change fundamentally. Mm. I think a lot of people probably, are, if they've gotten to this point in the conversation, will also accept that. If you were to close with, I guess the step one, like the the thing that I should immediately do as I move forward in my life from here, that would help me to start moving towards that person that I want to become, the organized, great partner, successful in his business, great with his podcast, all of those things. What is that first step? And do you know what's funny is because my brain keeps thinking about the taxi driver that I, that I met on the way here, mm-hmm. who said he'd listened to the podcast and mm. he told gave me a little bit of a window into his world. So he's driving mm-hmm. the cab every day. Mm-hmm. And I meet a lot of cab drivers that listen to the podcast and we chat. And oftentimes they, sometimes they, they have dreams of doing other things. So they, mm-hmm. they might say to me, do you know, I want to start my own business one day. And I'm just looking, I'm looking for the first couple of steps, mm-hmm. but I, I reflect on what you said and go, they're going to be so hardwired into their patterns mm-hmm. 
and their jobs and their habits and their routines that it's very hard to make that jump. Yeah. So if I could give people a takeaway to start with that's really simple, but it doesn't mean there isn't a lot of hard work at the other end of it, it would be be very clear on what it is that you want. So you've mentioned a few things. Spend five minutes sitting down and visualizing those things being true and then give gratitude for that. That would be my first step. Give gratitude for? Those things being true. Just five minutes, I'm a great partner, I'm not messy, my podcast is super successful. S like see it, feel it in your body, taste it in your mouth, hear it in your ears. Completely immerse yourself in that for five minutes, longer if you can. And then just be so grateful for all of that. Essentially what you're doing is moving your brain from a fear state to a trust state. And that is the gateway to making these changes. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.